Good morning. I am Ruth Winkler. I am a Christian Church Disciples of Christ minister. My husband and I live in Watauga, Texas, a suburb of Fort Worth. For 25 years now, I've been a mentor for the Education for Ministry program, and I am with you this morning to celebrate David Smith's graduation. If you are not familiar with the Education for Ministry program, it is a four-year curriculum from the University of the South in Suwannee, Tennessee. EFM is a continuing education course written for laity. Upon our baptism, we are called to be ministers. EFM gives participants knowledge of the scriptures and Christian history, as well as clarifying what we are called to do in our personal ministry. If you have questions about EFM, please visit with David. He can tell you about his experiences and give you my contact information if you wish to visit with me. I would love to visit with you. I met David one year ago in our EFM class. He was searching for an online class to finish his fourth year. It had been 10 years since he had finished year three. He found me and my class. Year four focused on the study of modern theology. We have been blessed by spending the past year learning and growing in the faith together. The class and I have also journeyed with David through his cancer diagnosis and his treatments so far. We have prayed with him and for him on this journey. David remained committed to his studies and his presence with us in the class. Although worn out physically sometimes, he never missed coming to class on Monday nights. The class members and I are blessed to know him and to have journeyed together with him. It is a pleasure for me to present David with his Education for Ministry Certificate of Completion. It reads, The University of the South School of Theology to all who have been baptized into the ministry of Christ's Church. We take pleasure in commending to you David Archie Smith, who has completed the program of theological education by extension, Education for Ministry, as provided and administered by the School of Theology, the University of the South. Here you go, David, with good wishes and prayers for God's blessings on the next steps in your journey. Congratulations, David. Good morning. I could not have completed this course without a great deal of help. It is normally a four-year process. I only took 14 years. I really needed a lot of help. So many people to thank. First of all, you, the people of St. Matthews, your love, backing, and most of all your prayers have been so important to me in this most difficult of years. Kathy and the girls, they kept me healthy and made sure that I had the time and to study and for class. Father John, who encouraged me to finish the program and helped with the necessary resources. My mentors, Steve Samples, who introduced me to EFM, and Ruth Wrinkle, Winkler, who graciously took me into her class so that I could finish the course. She has been a model of Christian leadership and everything that a Christian educator should be. My classmates have been a community of love and support. I leaned heavily on their prayers as they balanced treatments, study, and quarantine. And then finally, the School of Theology at the University of the South. They saw the need for advanced education for laity and have educated over 100,000 people worldwide. Tomorrow is the feast of our patron, St. Matthew. We canonically cannot move his feast to the day, but I am going to give you a sneak peek into the epistle appointed for tomorrow. 
It's Second Timothy three thirteen through seventeen. Wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it. And how, from your childhood, you have known the sacred writings that were able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Here we find St. Paul reminding his young protege Timothy of the perils of, that his flock will be facing and how to successfully avoid them. Does wicked people and impostors deceiving others and being deceived Sound familiar? It should. How do you separate truth from deception? Paul's answer is to be educated. Continue in what you have learned, knowing from where you learned it, in the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith. This is the teaching mission of the church. Today we call it Christian formation. It is a vital support function of the church that gives us these tools to engage those wicked people and imposters. Nothing, there is nothing more able, excuse me, this is nothing more than being able to fulfill our baptismal vows. Education for Ministry is a program for Christian formation offered by the School of Theology at the University of the South. The first two years are spent in studying the scriptures, together with textbooks to help place them in the historical and theological context. The third year, church history is studied, followed by a year spent on theology. This is a program that takes place in a small, intimate seminar group, and is intended to lay a foundation to assist laypersons in developing their individual ministries. Soon we will all renew our baptismal covenant. We will make promises that we have made several times before, both on our own behalf and on behalf of our children and godchildren. The familiarity of them, I think, may rob them of their power. We will promise to continue in the Apostles' Fellowship and the prayers, to pers persevere in resisting evil, to proclaim by example the good news of Christ and to serve Christ in all persons, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to strive for justice and peace, and to respect the dignity of every human being. This is hard stuff. To resist evil when it's often disguised, proclaim the good news to folks who think they already know it. To love a neighbor that does not love you back. To strive for justice and peace when you're met with anger and disdain. To respect the dignity of someone who does not respect himself. How do we do this? I think Paul has the answer. We need to be educated. We need to learn the scriptures and sacred writings. To do this, we spend time and resources on Sunday school adult forums, various classes through the week. Education for Ministry is a college-level extension of that course that continues that process. The goal always is that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. With that in mind, join me in renewing our baptismal covenant.